Welcome to Requirements 101, Module 1. Houston, we have a problem. In the previous module, we kicked things off with a quick overview of the course. If you have not yet seen it, we suggest you back up and start there. Requirements. You're probably wondering if we could not have chosen a more boring topic to talk about. But as we will see in this module, if great food is the language of love, then great requirements is the language of human progress. But before we get any more philosophical, how would you define the word requirement? Please select what you consider to be the best definition of the word requirement from these options. The first option is not a good definition of the term requirement. In a future module, we will see that different organizations use different terms to formally express a requirement. Thus, this shorthand definition does not work. On first inspection, option two looks too simple to be an acceptable definition. However, if we were to explain the term requirement to a child, this would be the one we would use shortly followed by a lecture on the difference between a need and a want, also something that we'll be covering in a future module. Option 3 is starting to get more scientific and also introduces the idea of a condition rather than just a thing. Thankfully, the fifth law of thermodynamics still holds in Requirements 101. So, the longest answer in a multiple choice is usually the best answer. This definition is taken from an IEEE standard and introduces the idea of a contract, specification, or other formally imposed document, as they call it. We know this is very 2010, but here is a word cloud for the word requirement, collected by a researcher at Munich University. The best definition depends on the context and the audience and we'll return to the subject of context in a future module. Requirements allow us to express and communicate a need, a compulsory and necessary condition. See, it's one thing having a great idea in your head to solve a complex problem, but it is a whole other thing conveying that idea, conveying that need to another person. We use requirements to ensure that this process of communication goes as smoothly as possible. Wait, if we've been solving problems for thousands of years, then surely we've worked out all this requirements business, and we can get back to watching cute cat videos on YouTube, right? Definitely not. Scientists don't exactly know when humans started talking to one another. There's no voicemail archaeological evidence, but we think it was at least 50,000 years ago. And yet, communicating effectively in words is still something that many of us struggle to do. Question 2. If you type in communication skills in Amazon UK's search field, how many books are presented in the search results? Is it A. More than 4,000? Is it B, more than 5 million, or is it C, less than 2,000? Over 40,000 books are tagged with communication skills on Amazon UK's site. Now, if communicating with words wasn't hard enough, most of our requirements that we deal with are written down words, something we've only been doing for less than 8,000 years or so. Uh -huh. And so it's not surprising that when you search for writing skills on Amazon, you get over 50,000 search results in the book section. This communicating business is clearly a tricky business, so it's no wonder to learn that on projects, requirements consistently feature as the top five causes for project failures, projects being late, over budget or just complete failures. Next, we'll look at results reported from a survey by the Project Management Institute. 
There are so many examples out there of projects that failed fantastically due to poor requirements. But it isn't all doom and gloom. There are lots of projects that have been completed within time and within budget, and with satisfied end users. It does happen regularly in our industry. Thumbs up. We'll use the learning from what these successful projects are doing right when it comes to requirements and requirements quality. Remember a few minutes back we said requirements has everything to do with communicating a need. Well, the need for clear communication and unambiguous requirements has never been greater in the oil and gas industry. Not only are our projects becoming more complex, whether that's increased technical complexity or increased execution complexity, but as the independent project analysis already pointed out back in 2015, owner experience is either retiring or being retired. And since the downturn, many engineering service providers, contractors, and equipment suppliers are also letting go of their experienced staff. And just to make matters a bit more challenging, IPA, the Independent Project Analysis, states that the quality of work in the oil and gas industry is at the lowest it has ever been. Now, we cannot fix all of these problems by simply writing even more requirements. We've kind of been trying that the last 10 years or so, and this approach will definitely not work if the requirements quality is not significantly better than what we have been producing over the same period. We have a burning need to improve on requirements writing, which is why you are massively encouraged to follow Requirements 101. A quick recap of this module. In our world, a requirement is the formal expression of a need or necessary condition that must be met by a system, widget, thing. Call it whatever you want. It needs to deliver that need or condition. We also saw that 35% of organizations identified inaccurate requirements as the primary reason for project failure. And with the challenges that we are facing in the energy industry, there is an even greater need to communicate our needs and our requirements with quality and precision if we are to achieve better outcomes on our projects.